How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. This is Cuban Cigar from Against the World Gaming, and today I'm going to show you guys a little something that I had a really hard time finding the correct information online and how to do it. And a lot of people in my community felt that the content was needed because it's hard to find. Um, and that is a couple of things. First, I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own Valheim dedicated server on your computer. Uh, just like I've shown in tutorials in the past for Seven Days to Die dedicated servers and modding your dedicated servers and Mischief Maker and all those other tutorials I've done, this is going to be very, very similar. We are going to make a uh, Valheim tutorial. And then after that, depending on how long the video goes, I'm going to show you guys how to mod Valheim, not only your single player game, but also how to mod your server if you decide to do so. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download Steam CMD. I will put a, uh, a link to the Steam CMD page that I'm on in the video description. So make sure you look down there. You can go right to that link, click download Steam, and you should be go good, good to go. So we're going to go ahead and download the Steam zip. <clears throat> Come on, Chrome. Do your thing. Do your work. Um, and we're going to get this going first. And then I will show you guys all of the uh, commands that are needed to make it work. So what I like to do is I like to go onto my computer, so this PC, and I like to go into my C drive, which is almost full. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Um, and I've got a bunch of stuff in here, don't I? Okay, so I'm just going to make a new file, new folder, and we're going to call it Steam CM. Whoops. That, that didn't, CMD. Okay, um, perfect. And in there, I think I've done this exactly the same way when I did Seven Days to Die. We're gonna throw the Steam CMD dot executable in there. And now we can close that out. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run it. <clears throat> it's going to update the Steam files that are needed for Steam command prompt to actually work. Steam CMD is Steam command prompt. Um, you're going to notice this is filling up with files from, from this doing what it's got to do. Okay, so that's step one. Download Steam CMD, stick it into a, f a folder somewhere on your computer that you can remember where it was, and then just double click it. It'll take care of everything for you. When it's done, it'll say loading Steam API. Okay, you're good to go. Okay, next thing you want to do <clears throat> is you want to you want to type log in anonymous. if I could spell. Login anonymous, okay? Now I am connected to Steam anonymously. You could log in with your Steam credentials, but it's totally not necessary. This works just fine. And then the next thing you wanna type is app underscore update space eight nine six 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 zero. This is the app ID for the Valheim dedicated server files. So hit enter, and now it's going to create the <clears throat> all of the Valheim information, everything you need from Valheim to run a server, okay? Now, the one thing that I didn't find much information on is with Valheim, the seed that you're playing on, the seed that you're playing on doesn't get uh, generated by the server. The server just randomly generates a map and you don't have a whole lot of control over um, putting a seed in like your map name. None of that really matters or none of that actually ta it's taken into account. The server software just randomly creates a seed for you and you have no idea what it is. So in order to to change it, you would have to generate a seed in your in your game. So you would essentially like start a single player game, generate the seed you want, whatever world you want, and then you're tell, you will tell the server to use that, that save file, sort of. You're just telling it to use that world. So, And I'll show you how to do this. And I'm going to wait. This is going to take a little bit um, for Steam Update to finish. So I will bring you guys back as soon as, um, as, soon as this is done. All right, so it's literally, I pushed the button to pause the recording and it was done right away, of course. So anyway, this is done. I can now just type in exit, um, if I can spell exit, and that will shut down Steam ID. 
uh, Steam CMD. So now what I want to do is I want to take a look at Steam apps. So you're still in your Steam CMD, wherever you put it, wherever you executed it, you go to Steam apps, and then you go to common, and then there's your Valheim dedicated server, okay? Um, the place where you tell the server which map to use is in this start headless server batch file. So if you um, right click and you open with something like notepad or notepad plus plus, which is what I like to use, this right here, this Valheim server line is your, your information, okay? Um, keep in mind, if you want your friends to be able to join your server, which I'm assuming if you're making a server, you want them to be able to join, you have to open these ports, um, in order for them to be able to join. And these are, uh, I want to say these, I, these are, you know what? Let me look to be sure before I tell you if they're TCP or UDP, let me take a quick look. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. They are UDP port so you want to you want to open the or port forward this range udp 254 oh my gosh 2456 through 2458 you want to make sure you port forward those um on your router and I, and i've got another video with 7 days to die on how to port forward every router is different so port forwarding videos can always be kind of a, a little bit tricky to do but this file here um essentially is where you tell the server what the name of your server is going to be. So let's say you want to call it, uh, you know, Joe's Awesome, you know, if I could spell again, Valheim server, right? This is in the, in the Valheim um, server list where you can search for servers. This is where, this is what people will see. So you'd tell your friends, hey, go on, go on to Valheim, search for Joe's awesome Valheim server, and, and they'll, they'll find it. Okay, I don't know who Joe is, just that's the name that popped in my head. Um, this port is the port that your server is going to be connecting through. Um, if you want to do like IP connections or direct IP connections, there's a you would type in your IP address. So you would go to ipchicken.com and, and get your IP address. Um, and then it would be that IP address, and then you would do, um, <clears throat> like a with that IP address, you would do a colon and then the port number. So if your IP address is, you know, not that this would be it, but if your IP address is like, you know, one nine six eight four five one one, you would then do colon two four five six, and that would be your like direct connect IP address. So if you don't know your IP address, go to ipchicken.com. It will tell you what your public IP is. And this is the port. Um, this, is where, this is where you assign the world, okay? Let's say you've loaded up Valheim single player and you made a world called Hyrule, right? Because you're a Legend of Zelda fan and you love Hyrule, right? The, the server is going to look on your computer's save files from Valheim and it's going to find a file called Hyrule. I know I have a, uh, a file called Hyrule, so that's why I'm picking it. And the, the password is going to be something like, you know, something secret. So something secret, <laughs> whatever you want to, you know, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to just do one, two, three, four, five um, for, for whatever. But you can, obviously, you want to make the password something you can remember and you want to tell your friends, hey, Search for Joe's Joe's awesome Valheim server, and the password is one two three four five whatever. And then you want to save this, okay? And just to kind of show you how this works, if I were to go on Steam, and I go to my library, and I go to Valheim, and I go to manage, and I go to browse local files. Actually, no, I'm sorry, sorry, that is that is not accurate. You want to go to your own files. Uh, so your user file, so you go to your C drive, you go to users. In my case, it's Cuban. Then you want to go to app data. Um, I want to say it's roaming. Uh, I'm trying to remember now. It's been a while since I've looked at this. Actually, it was local. Um, <clears throat> where is Valheim? No, there's Valorant. That's not, that's not the one. It is, 
app data local local low oh that's right local low that's the weird one and then iron gate sorry valheim <clears throat> and then worlds and as you can see i've got hyrule and i've got something else hyrule grind world and middle earth which is middle earth is, is our server um the, these were generated in the valheim game so to show you how to do that we're gonna go into valheim now Ignore this stuff because this is because I have a I have modded my copy of Valheim, which I will show you guys how to do. Um, <clears throat> but if you want to generate your own world, and it will be located in that folder I just showed you, you'd, you'd open up Valheim. Um, game starting, okay. You hit start game. You've got your character. Obviously, I've got my character Cuban, and let's say I want to I want to generate a new world, and I've got a seed for it, okay. I I've got a seed. I'm going to type it in here and it's going to be some, I don't know, whatever. Uh, Odin, uh, I don't know, Odin is king. And I know that's an actual seed, I think. And I'm going to name the world uh, server test world. Okay. If I hit done, it's going to generate this world. I don't want to generate this world, but that's how you do it. You hit done. <clears throat> the, the game starts. It, it, it drops you into the world. And the world has been generated. Then you just quit, and and you're and you're good to go. Okay, so that's that's essentially how you generate a world. And then those world files, like I showed before, are going to be in your C drive, users, your user folder, um, app data, which is usually hidden, local low, Iron Gate, Valheim, worlds, and it will be here. You really only need the name of it. That's all you need. Whatever you name that world, that is what you're going to put in the Steam CMD folder or file that we did earlier um, in my Steam CMD, Steam apps, common, Valheim dedicated server, start headless server. Nope. No, 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 no. I don't want to run it. Sorry. Start headless server. Uh, and then, so here it would be whatever you named the world not the seed not the seed but the actual name because the seed is one thing and the name is another and you would put that in here and then it would it would actually load that world so that's that's essentially it that is how you make a valheim dedicated server to run the server you simply double click this file so what i would do if i were you is i'd right click it okay i would hit send to and i would create a desktop shortcut and that will pop a shortcut right on your desktop and you can just double click this and it will start the server for you. Okay, it's super simple. Once the server is up and running, in order for you to close the server, and it'll tell you that at the beginning, <clears throat> it'll, you'll want to hit control C. Um, you probably have to hit it twice. And then it'll say, are you sure you want to shut down? And then you say, you type yes and, and Y and, and then enter, and then you're good to go. So that's, that's essentially how you create, uh, configure, and start a Valheim dedicated server, okay? So now, let's get into modding. I wanna mod this server, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to mod the, the single player game, okay? So if you go to, oh, what the heck is it? Recently closed, no, no, don't, no, that's not it. Uh, it is Nexus, yeah, I'm gonna put a, I'll put this in the description as well. Uh, nexusmods.com forward slash Valheim. There are tons and tons and tons of mods on Nexus Mods. Okay, the reason I needed to show this is because um, they don't, a lot of people didn't, don't tell you that <clears throat> in, when you're doing, when you're modding Valheim, you absolutely have to have uh, a specific, like, core which allows the game to be modded. Now, if you install something like Valheim Plus, which is like an overall quality of life mod, and this is probably the most popular mod out there right now, it allows you to, to change a, conf a config file that you can then make it so that you can travel through teleporters with or in your inventory. Among other things, you can change stack sizes. There's a ton of stuff you can do, okay? So you decide, I want... I want Valheim Plus. The nice thing about Valheim Plus is it already comes with the core files that you need 
to then be able to install other mods, okay? Um, if you don't want Valheim Plus, and let's say you just want like a better UI, or you just want a sorting mod, or any of the other mods you see here, the beauty is, let's say you want the, the, the quick slots, the equipment and, and quick slot mod. This is a phenomenal mod because it actually takes your armor and separates it into a separate uh, bucket, and your quick slots go into like Z, you, you can assign the buttons for your quick slots so that those are not taking up room in your inventory. It's a great mod, okay? And if you look down here, it's going to tell you that it requires uh, BIPX, Bipin X, okay? Bipin X is, is, is your, your core program that allows you to mod Valheim. So if you're not going to do um, Valheim Plus, which already has Bipinex, it comes with it, um, then you should download Bipinex. Now, for the sake of what's popular, I'm going to download Valheim Plus, okay? And I am going to go ahead and download it. So where is it? Um, manual download, sorry. And you might have to create an account with Nexus Mods. I, I think they they uh they would rather you you create an account so in our case i need both the server files so and i'm going to need the client files client files are your game and server files are the dedicated server that you plan to run for this we need both of these okay and any mod you install going forward you will have to also install on uh, if you put it on the server it has to go on the client so if you have friends um, and they want to be able to use the mods, if they don't have them, then the, they can still join your server, but the mods won't, they won't have the mods. They'll be playing in vanilla. So it's not a huge deal, but I would highly recommend if you mod your server, you have your friends mod it also. So we're going to go ahead and download the server one. And yeah, whatever, go ahead, do, do what you got to do. So that's going to go ahead and download, and then I can hit back and I'm going to download the client one as well. So why don't you go ahead. <clears throat> and then just for the sake of showing you guys a regular mod as well, we are also going to download, um, let's do the equipment, quick slot, whatever. So, but any of these other mods, okay? And they usually will tell you what they require. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and see, it tells you additional files required BIP and X. But again, like I said, if you've already installed Valheim Plus, then you already have Bipinex. So if you don't have it, click this and, and you can download. But I'm, I already have it, and you probably already have it at this point because you have Valheim Plus. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. And then here, you know, this guy made it. If you want to donate to him, you can, um, but it's not necessary. I recommend you do. I mean, he put uh, obviously some hard work into it, so, you know, help the guy out. So we can close this out now, all right? And I want to open my downloads. And right here, you will see uh, the server. Let's start with the server files, okay? With the server files, and, and in any of these, any of these that you are going to extract, do not extract them directly into your Valheim game or server folders. You want to extract them like maybe to your desktop and then extract them and, and then cut them into the into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these and I'm just going to drag them onto my desktop. Okay, they're all on my desktop. They've been extracted. And then I can grab them again and drag them into the dedicated server. And I'm going to say replace. It will ask you this. And, and yes, you want to replace the files. Now, as you can see, the Bipinex is right there. Okay, that's good to go. So now my server has uh, Valheim Plus installed on it. It's ready to go. And we'll have to make a few little changes. Um, and I'll show you guys that. Actually, why don't we go ahead and show you that now. So you want to go into the Bipinex folder. And you want to go to config. And you want to configure Valheim Plus. So right click this, open it with note, you know, notepad or notepad plus plus. And everything is in like categories, okay? So there's like an advanced building mode that you can mess with. You can click this link and you can see what that's all about. There's an advanced editing mode. 
you can modify the way the beehive um, works in the game. If you enable this, it then enables the other two. So you can change it from, you know, producing honey every 1200, 1,200 seconds, because that's 24 in-game hours. Let's say you want this thing to pop out honey twice a day. So change this to 600. That'll be 12 in-game hours. And let's say you want it to pop out 10 honey every time. Change the 4 to a 10. And now your beehive is going to pop out 10 honey twice a day. You could do that. That's up to you. Same um, with building. You can turn this on and then you would remove the invalid placement mess messages and things like that. So you can kind of remove, you know, whether or not the weather damages, like when the rain falls on your non-covered floors, you can turn that off so it doesn't damage anymore. Um, you the maximum placement distance, like you, you can only place stuff five meters away from you. You can increase this to place stuff 10 meters away from you. So there's all sorts of stuff. But the big one that I like to turn on is items. I enable items. So this first part enables the section. So I change this to true. And you're going to want to do this. Um, you don't have to do this on your, on your single player's files unless you want these settings in, in your single player game. Whatever you do in the server, whoever, the, the people that join you that have this mod, it will use these settings. So they don't have to match you exactly. Okay. And then enables you to teleport with ores and other unusually restricted objects. So this is the one that I think everybody sets to true. Oops, if I could spell true, right? Um, <clears throat> there are others. If you want your, you know, everything to be lighter, you can adjust the weight. So I can do minus 50 and that will make everything 50% lighter. Um, the other one I like to change though is the stack multiplier. I like to go times 200. That gives your stacks three times bigger. So instead of carrying a stack of 50 stone, you now carry a stack of 150 stone. So that you're only bound by your weight, not so much by your, your, your slots, right? So th that's what I like to do. You can obviously do this however you want. Again, you can change the fermenter. You can change the way food works. You can change the way the furnace works. So if you kind of read through all of this, you'll see like different settings. The next one that's super duper important is you want to go down to server and you want to do this on your server version and you're going to want to do this on your single player as well because this is a version check and this can be really annoying, okay? I turn off version check on my server and I also turn it off on my single player because version check, what it does, if someone who has vanilla and doesn't have any of the mods tries to join your server, this will prevent them from joining, okay? Which is not a big deal. People can still play on your server and play it as, if, as it's vanilla. It's okay. But the big issue is if you want to join a vanilla server and you have this set to true, you won't be able to join that vanilla server. You can still play the game vanilla if you join a vanilla server with all of the mods installed as long as you set this to false. So that this one is super important in the server section. Um, in the server section, make sure you set this line here to false and then save. Okay. Any anything else you want to mess with is totally up to you. However, you want to change the game. Okay. And we'll we'll probably go through the same file again when I do. Your, your single player. So I save that. We're good to go. Okay. So my server, my server is ready. We can close this out. Now we're going to open up the client. Okay. Um, so now I've got my client files. If I go to steam, I go to my library, I right click Valheim. I go to manage and I hit browse local files. Here's my, my version. Okay. I've already copied all of this and pasted it in. As you can see, I have a bip and X folder. I have Valheim data. I have everything. So you you simply extract all of this to your desktop and then move it all into your 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 client copy of the game. Okay. Works the same way now with the quick slots. Okay. Now the quick slot one is uh let's close this. The quick slot one is quite simple. Okay. You're gonna want to do this on both your server and your your local copy. So you open the BIP and X, and this is exactly the same on both, okay? So what I'm gonna show you right now 
this is this is my local copy, but we let's also pretend it's the server at the same exact time. And you're going to do this to both. You're going to open the BIPNX folder. You're going to open plugins. And then you are going to drag the DL. All of this crap, this junk right here, doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. This is the mod. This is the equipment and quick slots mod. You want to take this, drag it to your desktop, and then drag this up here. Now, I already have it, so I don't need to do that. As you can see, it's right there. Any mod you install, this is where it goes. It goes in the plugins folder, in the BIPNX folder, and then plugins. And it's the same with the server. It's exactly the same. So I'm going to delete that because I don't need it, but that's how this works. This Better UI is the only one that's a little different. Um, when I extracted Better UI, um, this folder was this. So to play it safe, I moved the entire folder in there, and then you can see that the mod is in the folder. It still works. I don't know if it'll work outside of the folder. I didn't want to risk it, so I put the folder. So if you do the better UI mod, just keep, kind of keep that in mind. And that's pretty much it. That's how you install um, mods to your Valheim server. Um, and remember, like I said, that config, make sure you set the version check to false on both your server and your client files. So that's, and that's it. So from there, I can, I can open up Valheim and I'm actually gonna join this right here. This is Bipinex. As you can see, it says Bipinex 5.4.50. It's loading up all of the mods and everything so that when you go to play, um, well, that's not good. Okay, there we go. When you go to play, <laughs> every once in a while, when you, when you load your game and you see Valheim Plus, then you know you did it right. So if I go to start game, I go to start, I go to world. Now my world is called XAWX Gaming Valheim Server. Okay. And it looks like someone's playing. Hmm. Um, so we're not going to go in there because someone's in there. We're going to go to Hyrule, the, the, the map I made, right? We're going to go there. Let's go ahead. Let's go into Hyrule and I'll show you guys what the, uh, the quick slots and all that stuff looks like. So you can kind of get an idea. But this is going to be a modded, a modded world. Then you're going to notice that my stack sizes are different. You're going to notice that I have a sword button um, in my inventory. Uh, you're going to notice that the UI looks slightly different. Um, the durability on my weapons has a, a green line instead of a uh, instead of. A, so if, if I tab, you can see right here my my armor is off to the side. It's not taking up slots in my inventory. My food is down here. Now I can, in the config, I can change these letters to be whatever I want. This is a default. B, V, and Z is a default. You can make it whatever you want. If you want to make it, you know, F1, F2, F3, you can do that. It doesn't, as long as you don't do F5. F5 opens the console, so don't do anything with F5. But, and you can see here, I have a sort button. That'll sort my inventory, okay? Um, the other one I have is, there's a mod that the, the workbenches will automatically use what's in the inventory nearby. I also have that mod on here. So tons of mods, it's pretty cool. You can see the green lines, the stars, instead of a number here, normally for vanilla, this is a number. Stars tell you like what level my weapons are and my armor and whatnot. So and that's pretty much it, guys. If you found this video helpful, if this helped you out, uh, please make sure to hit the like button. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel as it helps us out big time. And also leave any comments down below, any questions you have or if you need any help, the comments down below are a great place to get help, or you can join the Discord, which the link for that will be in the description. Um, I'm happy to help anybody who needs help. Um, I'm usually uh, in my Discord, and I read all of my comments. So if you ask me a question, I will for sure answer. Also, as a reminder, guys, I do stream over on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Links for that will be down in the description. I play Valheim, Seven Days to Die, Space Engineers, tons of games, and it's a great community. They, they will welcome you with open arms. You want to come hang out, get advice, give advice, ask questions, hang out with some super cool people that are just going to be very friendly and welcome you with open arms. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope this video was helpful for you. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time.